maybe pound for pound the best fighter in the world today, the undisputed middleweight champion of the world. Olympic Committee, the internationally known champion swimmer Donna De Verona. Square Garden on its feet cheering both uh, Roberto Duran and marvelous Marvin Hagler who meet on November the 10th and uh, we're getting one side cheering Duran Duran another side screaming Hagler uh, uh, Hagler you can sense already the pitch starting to build for that fight is these two fighters in a ring that uh, Duran certainly knows well so with our introduction of uh, champions who are present tonight, we're ready for the uh, business at hand. Ray Boom Boom Mancini is about to defend against Orlando Romero of Peru. Let's take a look at both of them. Top Rank invites you to meet the WBA's lightweight champion, Ray Boom Boom Mancini of Youngstown, Ohio. I want to be very sharp tonight. I want to have an impressive victory. Not only for myself and for the, my fight fans, but also to show the people that I treasure this title and I'm not about to let anybody take it away from me. So this is definitely a fight that I want to look good in, but bottom line is I have to win no matter what. The champion, Frias. Ray Boom Boom Mancini made his dream come true in May of 1982, but Arturo Frias made it tough. In the first round of their battle for the WBA's lightweight championship, Frias rocked Mancini with a left hook to the head. The undefeated son of Lenny Mancini, a lightweight contender in the 1940s, had to shake off the effects of that blow to cause a rally. And while we watched Prius practice boxing all week in training, we had the feeling he'd be out there in his club style once the bell went. And that's what's happened. A slugfest in the opening round. champion what his father failed to do because of a war wound Mancini did years later his first title defense was back home in Ohio 
Ernesto Espana discovered that the burning sun wasn't the only heat generated in the ring. In the sixth round, Boom Boom overwhelmed the challenger from Venezuela. Mancini retained his crown with a sixth round TKO. Last November, Mancini and South Korea's Duck Koo Kim had a brutal brawl until the 14th round. Because of that knockdown, Kim passed away. In May, Mancini broke his collarbone while preparing for a third defense. His first major injury raises some questions. You had a problem in South Africa. Uh, you had a, a fractured collarbone and you had to cancel a fight last May. I'm sure there's uh, question marks in the minds of your fans that want to know how you've gotten over that injury. Well, again, this will be a turning point for me tonight. When I come out there, uh, burn in right from the get-go, jump on top of this guy and keep firing for as long as it goes, I'll show my fans that I'm back 100% physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, every which way possible, and that they have nothing to fear and that Ray Mancini is back stronger than ever and that he'll be around for a while. Mancini's challenger is undefeated Orlando Romero. Esta noche en la pelea que se tendría con Mancini, el campeón mundial, estaré este, disputando bastante bien en este combate y de acuerdo a cómo se desempeña el primer round de la, de la pelea, usaré lo, lo, lo estricto y lo, lo que pueda yo hacer para ganar esta pelea, ya que he venido decidido a conquistar el título mundial y dedicárselo a mi patria, el Perú. Okay, what Orlando has just said is this tonight, in his fight against Mancini, he's going to up to the ring with no prepared strategy. He's going to see the first round and, and see how the scenes go, and then he will apply the correct strategy. Okay. Romero should be no easy touch. The 23-year-old Southpaw is undefeated in 31 fights. 30 wins, no defeats, one draw with 12 knockouts. One of his most impressive wins came against Jerome Artis of the United States. Romero is the current Latin American lightweight champion. He has quick hands and feet, and he's a clever boxer. Romero is happy for the opportunity of challenging Mancini. Pienso que esta noche me dieron la gran oportunidad de pelear el título mundial y estoy bastante contento y sobre todo yo pienso que con la gran campaña que he realizado en Perú, mi tierra, espero que conquistar el título mundial para dedicárselo a mi patria, el Perú. But Orlando says that he feels very well to be in New York and this is true that this is the first time that he's going to fight outside his country. But he, uh, he thinks that he deserved that opportunity because of the brilliant campaign. And so we're just seconds away from Ray Boom Boom Mancini's third defense of his WBA lightweight championship against Orlando Romero Peru who's making his uh, first appearance in the United States after racking up 30 straight wins, no defeats, and one draw. And by the way, Romero, who is a southpaw, has uh, 12 knockouts to his credit. We watched him work the other day in a gym here in New York City. He's very quick with the hands. He's an excellent boxer. However, there is a question about his power. I think that is the key question as we watch Romero and his entourage come in. Can this man punch hard enough to hurt Ray Mancini or at least keep him off? And that will be the principal question that this big garden crowd will be asking and that we'll be wondering about. Matter of fact, uh, Romero was shocked uh, that uh, not enough fans knew about his exploits in Peru. This is the Latin American lightweight champion. Ray Mancini, of course, is the overwhelming favorite here as he makes his first appearance in the big arena, Madison Square Garden. A long time ago, uh, Mancini fought uh, at the Felt Forum, the smaller room here at the Garden, but not in the big room. And by the way, uh, Ray Mancini has fought three southpaws in his career. He defeated Tony Rutledge in the first round back in 1980. Uh, he uh, won a 12-round decision over Jose Luis Ramirez in 1981, and of course he uh, knocked out the late Duck Koo Kim in the 14th round last November. And that's uh, Ray making his way down the hallway, and when he enters uh, the big room here at the guard, you will hear a big explosion of cheers. A lot of emotion on the part of Mancini as he walks into the garden, and really much of the story tonight pinned to the fact that he is so anxious to fight in this arena. And as he comes in, we'll start to hear the cheers.
Ray Mancini uh, has a, a sense of history. <laughs> he knows that uh, his uh, his father, Lenny Mancini, the number one lightweight contender in 1942, didn't get a chance to uh, battle for the championship against Sammy and God, even though the contract was signed because he was drafted into the Army, suffered a wound, the Battle of the Bulge, but Ray, 20 years later, should say 30 years later, won the title his father did not win. Now we pause for the Peruvian National Anthem to be followed by the American National Anthem. Yo! 
There's the tail of the tape. Romero a year old. They're virtually the same height, same weight. With uh, Romero coming in a quarter of a pound underneath the 135 pound limit. Romero uh, enjoying a couple of inches in reach advantage. If it goes the full 15 rounds on the WBA rules, this will be scored in the 10 point must system. The three knockdown rule is in effect. There is a mandatory eight count. Bell doesn't save a down fighter unless it's the final bell of the bout. And uh, the standing eight count is at the discretion of referee Tony Perez. Romero, the southpaw in the blue, the familiar. Ray Boom Boom Mancini wearing the black trunks. This is a 18 foot ring and the garden crowd chanting Ray Mancini's name already. You know, if there's a danger for Mancini, it is that he'd be so overcharged by this uh, garden crowd and by being here that he would throw caution to the wind and get caught with some counter punches by Romero. It's something he really can't afford to do. Mancini hasn't been in the ring in earnest uh, since February 6th when he scored a 10-round decision over George Feeney in Italy. He uh, said before the bout that he has no apprehension about the ring rust. Fight's only a minute old. Says he's sparred over 200 rounds for this one. Also shows no ill effects of that broken collarbone back in May that uh, canceled his bout with Kenny Bang Bang Bogdan. And early Romero counterpunching very well as Ray comes in. And of course, that's what Romero wants to do, and that's what Mancini wants to avoid. Good luck took by Ray. I asked uh, Mancini about the southpaw. He said, I'll plant myself outside of Romero's right foot, but I won't be posing, I'll be belting. Here in the opening round, Romero with a stiff left hand a couple of times already. Mancini walking into the straight left of uh, Romero. And uh, Mancini been criticized in the past for lack of defense, not enough head movement. And that's in evidence in this first round. Mancini flat-footed, wanting to uh, trade with Romero. Left hand by Mancini. Romero with two left hands to the head of Mancini, and Ray counter with the left hook to the head. And they're getting right to it here in the opening round. This is not a getting-to-know-you round. They are getting to the nitty-gritty. Mancini using almost exclusively the left hook. There was a right, and as he throws the left, he's getting hit with the counter left hand of Romero. So Romero showing this crowd early that he can punch with accuracy. Final seconds of the opening round. Mancini has uh, battled three south balls already in his professional career, scoring wins over all three of them. Right hand by Mancini, countering left by Romero. The undefeated Peruvian showing uh, no nervousness here in the opening round in his first appearance in the United States. So Romero looks good in the opening round. Let's go to Mancini's corner. Murphy Griffith is there, his trainer. Al, what are you supposed to tell him? Well, I think what they want him to do is show more head movement. Uh, Romero's hitting him with the straight left hand as Ray comes in. You can see Griffith bobbing and weaving. I think that's what he's telling Ray. You've got to get lower, get your head under those shots as you throw your own left hook. Mancini looking a little cold in the opening round. Romero obviously uh, warmed up pretty well. Ray was indeed tight, and he can talk about the fact that he's been in the gym for those seven months, but no question some ring rust as we look at Orlando Romero. Romero uh, standing up during the break. Isn't interested in that stool. Romero, the Latin American lightweight champion, has had two successful defenses. His record is 31, excuse me, 30, 0, oh, and 1. He has 12 knockouts to his credit. Round two, scheduled for 15. By the way, Mancini's uh, opinion about the length of a championship fight, he says a true champion goes 15 rounds, not 12. Mancini is trying to use the jab against Romero, a weapon that uh, sometimes not so effective against Southpaws. And 
Mancini with a left hook to the head. Romero missed with a straight life left hand. Mancini was able to slip that shot. Romero with lots of body work here in round two. Now here is where Mancini must do well on the inside, and yet it's Romero who's punching very effectively. If Ray doesn't win on the inside, he'll have a problem in this fight. We're one minute into the second round. It's been a roller coaster ride for Mancini the last 16 months. He uh, won the WBA lightweight championship. And Arturo Frias had two successful defenses, including the 14th round knockout over the late Duck Koo Kim, who lapsed into a coma and passed away. He had to overcome uh, that tragedy and also had to overcome a broken collarbone back in May. Indeed, there's been a lot of setbacks to Mancini, and those months off, I really think, are showing some effect on him. Left hook to the head by Mancini, does it again. Romero holds on. And that left hook, momentarily at least, stunned Romero. Another left hook by Mancini, a countering shot. Mancini uh, seems to be a lot warmer here in the round two as he starts to uh, get his rhythm going. However, Romero is showing to be a pretty tough opponent here in the early goal. Another left hook by Mancini. If this fight continues to be fought inside as it is now, you would think it would benefit Mancini. And in this second round, as you mentioned, Sal, he's doing much better work inside. Mancini is. 20 seconds to go in the second round. Mancini wants to brawl. Romero's looking to box. Right hand by Mancini and then a left to the head. And a cut is opened on the left cheekbone of Romero. And blood is spurting out. So Romero's got a problem. He's got a cut on his left cheekbone. They've got to go to work right away. And that was because of a beautiful combination by Mancini. Ray was on the inside working well in that round. Romero inexplicably decided in the second round to fight inside with Mancini. As we take a look at Romero's face, uh, cut just on the other side of that nose. We get a, a brief glimpse of it there underneath the eye. That's Ray Mancini. He's got to be pleased with his work in the second round. They are applying some ice on the left cheekbone of Mancini. However, I don't believe that he is cut. This time, uh, Romero does sit down on his stool because they've got to work on that cut in his left cheekbone. In the final seconds, Mancini lashed out. Caught him with a left hook and a right hand, both to the head, and I believe that right hand opened up the slice on the uh, left cheekbone of Romero. We're poised and ready for round three. Romero opens up with a straight left to the head of Mancini. A left hand by Romero. That turned Ray's head around. Romero could have dropped in from Mars. There was nothing known about the uh, WBA's number one lightweight contender except that he was 30-0-1. Over the first six minutes, Al, I want your evaluation. Well, I think Romero is a much stronger fighter on the inside than Mancini would ever have imagined or than the observers here thought after watching Romero work in the gym. But I still think it's tactically the wrong fight for Romero. Mancini is likely to win if they stay on the inside. Just a trickle of blood from uh, the left cheekbone of Romero. No question, Mancini's got his rhythm now. Romero's right foot buckled. It came off the canvas. What a shot. Mancini not known as a big overhand right uh, hand puncher, but he certainly landed that one, and that did shake Romero. Mancini with a couple of body shots. Romero just butted Mancini. Mancini with a left hook to the head. And I think there's some blood coming from the left ear of Mancini. It was either uh, obviously a punch or a butt. I suspect it was a punch because the butt was on the face of Mancini. That did not open a cut. It was a, a, a shot by Romero. Romero just scored with a lead left hand. The southpaw still trying to 
wander down Mancini Street. That is to say, to fight him on the inside. And Mancini threw a right hand that was extremely low. He's trying to go to the body, but that was about the third or fourth that has landed low. Perez, no warning. I guess he didn't see that punch. Blood streaming down the left side of Romero's face. Romero with a straight left hand to the head of Mancini. And already in this fight, I'm sure Murphy Griffin not happy with the amount of punches Mancini has taken from Romero. Well, Ray Mancini took a good look at Romero in the opening round. He opened up the cut in the second round on Romero's left cheekbone. And here on the third, I sense that uh, Mancini's really digging in and throwing bombs. Less than 30 seconds to go in the third round. Mancini. And a couple of elbows thrown by Romero. But he's not above muscling on the inside, and he may need to do that to win this fight. That'll take care of round three. A couple of things, Sal, I think are clear at this point. Number one, Romero able to land pretty often with that straight left hand. Ray is not giving him the head movement he needs to give him. And at this point, I think a much tougher fight than Ray anticipated, even though we're only in the third round. Romero came into uh, this bout with the reputation of being a clever boxer with uh, very little uh, clout. However, he has disproved that quite early. And let's take a look at some action from uh, round three. And it was a very active round three. And uh, we will see that both fighters exchanged often. That was the big right hand for Mancini early in the round. A little later on, it was Romero who came back with some good straight left hands. And I thought he muscled Mancini on the inside much more than we would have expected. Mancini, once again, action from the third round, sizing up uh, Romero. And then uh, throwing the big overhand right. This is round four. Remember, Romero's got a cut in his left cheekbone. That happened in round two. despite the fact that he was really drilled. Ray has found home for that overhand right. And he's landing it well, but I'll tell you, he's leaving himself open when he throws it, Sal, and I would not be surprised to see Romero counter that shot. That cut on the left cheek of Romero has been reopened here in round four. You notice Mancini holding on on the inside. He's trying to uh, muffle Romero's very good work on the inside. See, he holds on again. And that's the big surprise in this fight, the fact that Romero's been able to fight so well on the inside. We really didn't expect that from him. But then we didn't know what to expect, because as you said, no one has seen this man fight in earnest, except for a few tapes. Mancini such an overwhelming favorite that uh, this uh, fight was taken off the boards, at least here in New York. Uh, Romero came here to New York saying that he was uh, intent on taking the title away and bringing it back to Peru. Well, we'll see. Just over a minute to go in round four. Left-right combination by Mancini. Romero counters with the left to the head. Ray doing a little bit better job of slipping that straight left hand out, bending at the waist a little bit more, making Romero miss with that punch. The pace slows a bit here in round four after a quick pace over the first three. Less than 30 seconds to go on the round. Mancini gets away with a low blow. Okay, break. Break, sit down. Okay, Left to the head 
by Mancini. That was a wicked left hook. Okay, great. Romero able to take that punch, and that was as good a left hook as Ray Mancini could throw. And that, of course, is his big weapon. He's had more success with the overhand right, which is normal against the southpaw. Take a peek into the corner of Ray Mancini. That previous round, the fourth, was about as even as you could get. It was very even, and uh, as we look at Romero, we noticed that, uh, as we talked about it, he had done very effective work on the inside. And he uh, had that left, straight left, pretty well on track. It's becoming obvious that Ray Mancini simply can't have an easy fight. His fight with Feeney, uh, the 10 rounder when he came back, was tough. And virtually all of his fights have been tough. And we see some swelling uh, around the left eye of Ray. They were applying that end swell, that piece of cold metal, to uh, relieve the swelling on the left eye of Mancini. Of course, we'll watch that for you. Sal Marciano with Big Al Bernstein, a ringside at Madison Square Garden. And we are into round five, scheduled for 15. That left hook by Mancini caught the shoulder of Romero. intent on landing the left hook against Romero. I'm, I'm not sure that that is the best weapon he can use unless he uses it to the body and then brings it to the head. Ray, as he sometimes does, is abandoning his body attack, and that's his staple, really. Crowd here at the garden yelling, boom, boom, boom. Another headbutt by Romero. Just a minute gone here in the fifth round. Many of the fight experts accepted Man expected Mancini to do the muscling on the inside, and I really think it's been the other way around. Romero using elbows, heads, and some pretty good upper body strength to push Ray around. A lead to the left hand by Romero butts Mancini again. Ray comes back with a left hook to the head. There's no question that uh, Romero's established his jab against Mancini. He's established his, his butt as well. <laughs> He's used that weapon a lot. And Mancini, for his part, has thrown a lot of low blows. And neither has received a warning from referee Tony Perez. And that's a little surprising. They've done a pretty good job on the cut on Romero's left cheekbone. Uh, it has been uh, closed. And Romero with the left to the head of Mancini. Romero with the left uppercut, and he is taking shots at Mancini's head here in the fifth round, less than a minute to go. Romero with that wide open stance. Left to the head by Mancini, or left to the head by Romero. Ray is not able to land that straight right and the overhand right as he did earlier. And I think that's a punch he's going to need very much against uh, Romero because he's not landing his jab very often. He's not getting the left hook in too often. A right to the stomach and two lefts to the head by Mancini. After an even fourth round, Mancini coming on here in the fifth. I think we've established the fact already this is not a piece of cake for Ray Mancini. That takes care of round five. We're in the corner of Orlando Romero. His manager, Bill uh, Ganoza, said Orlando is defending his reputation and that of Latin America in this fight, and he wants to win this for the students, the worker, and the people in the street in Peru. So uh, he's got a lot riding on his fight to He is fighting that way. He's fighting like a fighter that indeed wants this title very badly. Looking at his record, Romero won the Latin American lightweight title back in September of 1980. He's had several non-title fights. He's only had two defenses, and both of them successful. 
30 wins, no defeats, one draw, 12 knockouts. His most recent win back in May in the Lima against Julio Milone, a decision over 10 rounds. As far as Ray Mancini is concerned, he scored a 10 round unanimous decision over George Feeney in Italy. However, the cards revealed a pair of two point edges and a three point edge. It was a narrow victory for Mancini. He wasn't sharp in his first appearance since uh, uh, his bout with Duck Koo Kim. Tonight, Mancini uh, looks fit. He is uh, banging well. He may have looked a little stale in the opening round, but he's been sharp ever since. And Ray is not getting outside the right foot of Romero. He needs to have his left foot outside the right foot of Romero. It's on the inside. That's why he's a target for those punches. A typical Ray Mancini fight. They're never easy. And there's an exchange that typifies what Mancini goes through in virtually every fight. And each time he goes in the ring against Kim, against Feeney, they expect the fight to be a pretty easy one, and it is never that. Left to the head by Romero at the end of that exchange. And in this audience, oh, big right by Mancini. That was a wallop out. He wound up with that shot like he was throwing a ball from center field. By the way, he played center field in high school, was good enough to be uh, invited to the... Uh, Toronto Blue Jays training camp. I was going to say that in the audience, Hector Camacho, another softball and a fighter who, of course, is uh, the junior lightweight champion now, wants a match with Mancini. I think he may like what he sees so far as far as getting to Mancini. So does Bobby Chacon, who's here tonight. Aaron Pryor wants Mancini. Right now, the problem is Orlando Romero. A minute to go in round six. And all these rounds have been really pretty close. There are a couple you might call uh, clearly for one man, but I think these rounds are so close that uh, Mancini may need what they call the champion's edge in the scoring. Right hand lead by Mancini, and that drove back Romero. But Orlando came back with his own straight left. So he is not, he is not awed by the power of Ray Mancini. And that cut reopens on the left cheekbone of Orlando Romero, sustained back in round two. Round six winding down, less than 10 seconds to go. Except for the opening round, Al, in which uh, Romero was especially effective, I think that uh, rounds two, three, four, five, and six were quite competitive, with uh, perhaps the fourth round being the dullest of them all. Very close rounds, and uh, as we look into Mancini's corner, there's probably one thing I think he's failing to do in this fight that is most important to him. He is not digging to the body on the inside, as we've seen him do so many times in his previous fights. And I think that is going to be an important thing for him to do, Sal. If he doesn't start working with the body well, he could be in trouble in this fight. There's Lenny Mancini, the father of uh, Ray Mancini. And uh, Lenny has actually been quite candid. He'd like to see his son quit the ring uh, as soon as possible. I think Ray is looking toward uh, the Chacon fight, if he can win here tonight, of course, and possibly the Camacho prior, and then he would like to retire. But Orlando Romero would like to take that title away now and make that talk academic. Even Mancini said he'd like to retire next year at age 23. So we're into the seventh round. Romero comes out belting. A straight left hand, and that is the punch that Romero has used so often in this fight. And we have to acknowledge now Romero's defensive skills. He's been a pretty good defensive fighter in this fight. Another lead right hand by Mancini, and that was a whack. Romero comes back with a left to the head. That 
left by Romero is on the shoulder of Mancini. Ray is standing virtually straight up. We don't see him bending at the waist much. Not too much head movement. He's paying for it. He just took another left from Romero. And that was an uppercut. And uh, that was a shot by Romero. Romero with the left hand. That was a swat, however. Not too much clout on that one. A big left hand by Romero. A lead left. And Mancini holds on. Right now, I believe Ray Mancini is a fighter without a plan. He's not sure how to attack the southpaw. He wants to throw left hooks to the body and the head. He can't do it, and he can't get his lead right on track either. Tony Perez wants them to battle their way out of all that uh, body punching on the inside, and they're doing just that. Mancini with an inside right. Romero comes back with a left. About a minute to go in the round. This is undoubtedly Romero's best round in the fight, and you have to wonder if there aren't some signs of fatigue by Ray Mancini. He looks to be a little bit tired at this point. Blood once again streaming out of that left cheekbone of Orlando Romero. Mancini with a left hook to the head of Romero. A lead right. Well, Romero's looking real sharp, Al. Good hand speed combination punching by Romero. And Ray Mancini is not slipping those punches. Again, the lack of defense on Ray's part. He's been criticized for it. It's uh, rearing its ugly head tonight. And now there's a cut on the right cheekbone of Mancini. So a rough seventh round for Boom Boom Mancini. Orlando Romero and these Garden fans and all of you watching out there know that in this instance WBA may have been right when it rated Orlando Romero the number one contender. Often those ratings come under criticism but in his case clearly he's a good fighter and Ray Mancini has found that out and some look of concern in that corner. You see them dabbing away at that uh, small cut on uh, Mancini's right cheekbone. Here's some action from that seventh round and in slow motion. You see Mancini lunging, couldn't get full contact there with uh, Romero. And Romero with that lead left hand, his best punch of the fight thus far. Poised and ready here for round eight. Mancini comes charging out of his corner. And the intrigue is growing here at Madison Square Garden. I'm sure many people here did not expect this fight to go into the eighth round, and uh, I'm sure 90% of them, or 99%, thought Romero would have been knocked out by now. Lead right hand by Mancini. Romero comes back with a left to the head. Another right hand by Mancini. However, he caught Romero's left shoulder. All right, Greg. Greg, stay back. Wait up. again a spray of perspiration coming off the head of Mad Cena. Ray landed a countering right just a moment ago but his right hands are not having a big effect on Romero. I don't think that Mancini's been hurt by Romero despite the maybe three or four really big uh, shots. Well Romero not a big puncher only 12 knockouts among his 30 victories and uh, in his last two fights he had to go 10 for win so he's not a big banger but he's landing and of course that's important uh, for the scoring aspect. Mancini with a left hook, and that drove Romero sideways. Lead right hand by Mancini. Left to the head by Mancini. We're halfway through round eight.
Mancini wanted to fight at Madison Square Garden, and the intruder from Peru is making it a classic bout. He is indeed, and one of the things Ray is now doing is going to the body with some authority, and I do believe here, as we're only in the eighth round, that's going to be an important thing as this fight progresses. No problem with the cut on Mancini's right cheekbone is not reopened. However, there's blood coming from the left cheekbone of Romero. Romero nearly going through the ropes, and these ropes are a little bit loose. We've had that problem in some other fights tonight. We had a memorable brawl here in June when uh, Roberto Duran took the junior middleweight championship away from Davey Moore. And here again tonight, the boxing uh, crowd here in New York is being treated to another terrific fight. Mancini is cut now on the left eyebrow. And it's a bad cut out. It it's is. a bad cut for Mancini. It's coming down the side of his, uh, his face. He's uh, dabbing at it to get the blood out of his left eye. It may have come from a clash of heads uh, or possibly a right by Romero. I tend to think from a clash of heads. In any case, it's a problem. Let's take a look at uh, that left cheekbone of Mancini. A lot of blood coming out. Ironically, the cut was opened uh, just seconds before the bell. Uh, for most of the eighth round, Mancini was very effective. And it came after a very effective seventh round by Romero. Ray came back strongly. He worked the body well, the head. But a lot of that may be academic if this cut gets any worse. It is in a bad spot. You can see it's just to the side of the uh, left eyebrow. Mancini's uh, left eye has been swollen for several rounds. That cut now is causing lots of uh, apprehension in his corner. Romero's been battling with that cut in his left cheekbone since the second round. We're into round nine, scheduled for 15. Ray Mancini, except for his only defeat to Alexis Arguello, has always been up to the challenge. And he's facing a stiff Challenged tonight by the Peruvian Orlando Romero. That little flurry was this fight in microcosm. Ray landing a pretty good straight right hand and trying with a left hook, and Romero countering him with his own straight left. That's what's happened repeatedly through these eight, nine, nine rounds. Romero with a countering left. Mancini with a roundhouse right. That cut on Mancini's left cheekbone has not reopened. Right hand by Mancini to the head, and then a left hook to the head of Romero. Very pretty combination. Mancini with a hard left to the body. Despite the cut, Ray has picked up the pace here in the last two rounds. Two left hooks by Mancini to Romero's head, and he holds on. It just seems that Mancini fights his best when uh, he's under adversity. And in this round, Mancini going to the body. No problem with Mancini's cut. Blood coming from the left cheekbone of Romero. Garden crowd is rocking. We're halfway through the round. And on the inside, Ray Mancini is not fighting. He's holding on. There he landed another good right. Right hand by Mancini, and that stunned Romero. This is Mancini's best round. The left took to the head, and Romero goes down heavily. Romero is on his elbow. Tony Perez is over him. The count is six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good night, sweet prince. Ray Mancini is knocked out of Orlando Romero in round nine. Lenny Mancini sighs a sigh of relief. His son, Ray Mancini, flirted with danger and, in fact, with disaster. But he was able to pull it out with crisp combinations and a tremendous left hook here in the ninth round. And this garden crowd, indeed, is rocking with excitement. Ray Mancini literally may have pulled victory for the jaws 
a defeat. It was tough for him over the nine rounds. All the rounds were close. Romero had landed some good shots, but right now, Ray Mancini is basking in the adulation of this garden crowd. He looks to all four corners of this garden ring. And there's Sal Marciano. Let's go up to him. All right, let's get Ray. Ray, you were cut in the uh, eighth round. That was a severe cut. They did a heck of a job in your corner. And in the ninth, it was your best round of the fight. You really came back. Well, Griff told me, stay down below. We were waking him with the body shots. You know, this guy's so awkward. I'm getting hit with stuff I should never get hit with. He was so awkward, I had to catch him. But I didn't want to move back too much because he was coming in well. But I felt I heard him with the right hand over the top. I hit him with a few during the fight, and I said, I got to come back with it. I hit him with a good couple of good right hands. Followed with left hand with a perfect left hook. It caught him right on the chin. Uh, I'm just sad. I mean, I'm glad to see him now because he's a rough, tough, strong guy. And, man, I don't need that type of fight. Ray, were you worried? No, I just was waiting for the chance to slow him down because he's so awkward and so strong. You know, I wanted to be able to catch him. I wasn't worried about the fight. I felt I was doing good. I was getting too hit with some shots I shouldn't have been. But I felt I was leading, I mean, control the whole time. But, you know, like I said, that type of guys, you never know. He's so strong. Any one shot can do it. You wanted your night in Madison Square Garden, and you got it, and you came from adversity to win. Yes, it, it was a big win for me. Being in the ring for the first time, like I said, didn't know how it would be. It was a little different for being off so much. But it was great. I feel great now. Les, here's your father, Lenny. What did you think of it? It was a terrific fight. You gotta give the other guy a lot of credit. That reminded me of uh, uh, your left hook in your days. You were known for your left hand, and he took him out with one shot. Yeah, that was a good shot he hit him. You must be proud of your son. And here's here's Mrs. Mancini. Were you worried about your son? Uh, not too much. Uh, yes, I was. <laughs> I love him. And uh, Mrs. Mancini just said to Ray, I love you. So Ray Mancini scores a ninth round knockout over Orlando Romero. Let's go down to the ringside now, Bernstein. So Ray Mancini acknowledges that that was a difficult fight against Orlando Romero. However, he insists he was never in trouble during that fight. Well, whether in trouble or not, Orlando Romero came here from Peru and showed himself to be a much better performer than uh, we expected him to be or than many people expected him to be. He, after all, was ranked number one by the WBA and uh, that ranking justified by his performance. But Ray Mancini defends his lightweight championship successfully with that ninth round knockout. And it was the kind of knockout that will keep boxing people buzzing for a long time because he was in quite a struggle against Romero. This place is still buzzing over that knockout. And Sal Marciano back here from a wild ringside situation. You know, Al, the, the, the intrigue here, and I think uh, the worry for Mancini fans was definitely thickening. And uh, like the classic and exciting fighter that he is, he walloped him uh, in that ninth round. That is to say, Mancini walloped Romero. He went to the body, and the Romero's guard came down. That left hook had, was a clout. Indeed it was, and we talked about his need to go to the body. He did that effectively, and I think, as you said, that's what set up the big left hand. And uh, despite what Ray Mancini said, I'm sure there was a lot of concern, Sal, especially on the part of Murphy Griffith, and because of that cut that developed over his left eye. We mentioned that uh, Mancini fights uh, well when he's under adversity. He was cut in the eighth round over his left, uh, left eyebrow, and he came back with a tremendous left hook. Romero was on his back. He looked like uh, someone who was in a bad dream. He just could not lift himself with a canvas. And uh, Tony Perez counted him out for his first defeat as a professional. So we saw another classic here at the Garden. In June, we saw Roberto Duran beat Davey Moore tonight. Ray Mancini retained his WBA lightweight championship with a ninth round knockout over Orlando Romero. Don't forget, November the 10th, Roberto Duran challenges the undisputed middleweight champion of the world, marvelous Marvin Hagler.
We'll be looking forward to that brawl in Las Vegas at Caesars Palace. Al Bernstein and I will be there at ringside that night. Don't forget the date, November the 10th, Caesars Palace, Las Vegas. Roberto Duran challenging the marvelous Marvin Hagler. A very exciting night here at Madison Square Garden. Ray Mancini continues to be awesome. That's the only word I can think of because he has such a dramatic flair. Here's a guy who uh, takes on the challenge of an unknown from Peru who was certainly valiant and talented. Uh, Mancini suffering a severe cut and left cheekbone comes out and overwhelms him in the next round. Well, you said it best. I think adversity does bring out the best in Ray Mancini. The key question, though, and I think that's what some people are wondering, if he faces a fighter with more ability, a Camacho, a Pryor, or maybe even a Bobby Chacon, will he be able to come back from that adversity? And once again, the critics will say that Ray Mancini indeed takes too many punches. He even said in the ring, Al, that he was taking too many punches tonight. He said the guy had an awkward style. He wasn't pleased with his work. He might be able to chalk this up to the ring rust, but uh, I think the next time out, he's going to need to be better defensively. I know all of you out there want to see more of Mancini's work. Let's take a look at that ninth round. Remember, Mancini began the round with a severe cut in his left eyebrow. And he came out, worked the body a lot more, and then took out uh, Romero with a classic left hook to the head. Roberto. Roberto. Uh. Tell him. Yo, oh, tell him oh. we're going to go on the ring mic. Oh. Roberto, oh. As you take a look at this action, uh, this was the ninth round in which... Uh, Mancini eventually took out Romero. This is action in the ninth round as uh, Romero proved to be a, a sterner test than uh, Mancini expected. An awkward left-hander who had uh, was especially scoring well with the left hand early in the round, early in the fight. And in, indeed, it was in this ninth round that uh, he did take him out. Okay, here at uh, ringside, we have uh, Roberto Duran with Luis Espana. Uh, we would like to, Espana, excuse me. We definitely want to know of Roberto's reaction to this fight strictly as a fan. Strictamente como fanático, ¿cuál fue tu reacción de esta pelea? Bueno, que no esperaba mucho del peruano y me sorprendió bastante y yo creo que a toda la afición también. Y es un buen boxeador y aguanta bastante. He said especially he have a big surprise like everybody because the Peruvian guy Romero make a better fight than everybody was expecting. He's a good boxer. Uh, let me ask you, Kent, does he relate to Mancini's uh, fierce determination? Si, eso crees que se debió a la determinación de Mancini que el obtener el triunfo. Correctamente, perfecto. Yes, he agree with that. His determination of Mancini was real. We're, we're all going to take a look now at the, at the knockdown of the fight, and I, I would like to ask uh, Roberto uh, if he saw the left hook that knocked down uh, the challenger. Dice que te van a mostrar el video y a ver si viste la izquierda que le mete Mancini donde lo tumba a Romero. Perfectamente bien, dile que, pero que ya lo había, ya lo había tocado con una derecha arriba. Uh, he, uh, Romero was getting before a uh, right hand too, and with that left was finishing. I know that uh, Roberto has respect for another champion, but as a fight fan and as an expert, obviously, does he feel that maybe Mancini is uh, taking too many punches? Dice que él sabe que vos respetás a todos los campeones, eh, pero que le des una opinión respecto a Mancini, ¿cómo lo ves? Es un muy buen boxeador, es muy valiente, eh, siempre va para encima y es un boxeador que le gusta en, eh, su deporte y que pega duro y espero que llegue mucho más lejos todavía. He's expecting that Mancini can go long with his title because he's a good boxer, he's very strong, he's going all the time to the front and he's giving a good fight every time. Not to take away from the moment, but we have to ask Roberto about his challenge to uh, Marvin Hagler come November the 10th. Dice que tal vez es el mejor momento, pero que te quieren preguntar respecto a la pelea del día 10 de noviembre contra Marvin Hagler. Que la pelea es muy dura, que yo sé cómo viene Hagler, pero Hagler para ganarme a mí va a tener que pelear mucho. Y yo no creo que Hagler pueda noquearme a mí. Yo me lo voy a ganar él. It's a tough fight. He respects uh, Marvin Hagler, but uh, Hagler to beat him. 
don't have a chance. He's going to beat it, uh, Marvin Hagler. Thanks very much to Roberto Duran for coming by, providing us with a tremendous evening back in June. Tonight it was uh, Ray Mancini's opportunity to cause all the excitement here at Madison Square Garden. Remember, November the 10th, Roberto Duran tries to become the only man to fin win four world championships when he challenges marvelous Marvin Hagler. And you can see it at closed circuit outlets near you. Mancini now raises his record to 27 and one with his 21st knockout. It occurred in the ninth round. Orlando Romero loses for the first time after 30 wins and a draw.